it was better than I than I thought it would be from, you know, from being around guys like Miguel Cabrera, Ronald Acuna, you know, those guys that are, Miguel used to be one of the best, Acuna is one of the best right now. And, you know, like, man, like they're on the same team that I am. How fun is this? You know, <laughs> Salvador Perez caught my game and it was cool. Fly ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. All right, and I'm pumped to welcome back on the show good friend of the pod, Pablo Lopez. Pablo, pumped to have you back on, man. Oh, man, thank you. Thanks for having me. I know we did it one time uh, two years ago back in the pod, so thank you for having me. Of course. And a lot has changed. A lot has yeah. changed for you since then, man. So I'm excited to get you back on and talk to you. And first, I mean, we're close to opening day. We're getting there. How are you feeling? Are you ready to start the season? How's spring training going for you? Spring training's fun. I like spring training. It's a good time. You know, uh, you get to have that baseball feel again. You know, the off season happens four months without playing. Then you show up and you know you're going to get baseball for eight, nine months straight. It's a good feeling. And, you know, we're just a little over two weeks now before spring training. And, like, it's a good progression. It's a good progression. Uh, my last game was that four inning, 65 pitch threshold. So we keep moving up. The bat is responding well. So we're definitely getting closer. Um, now we get the luxury to work on a few things here and there to, you know, like if we have, if we want to have some things that we want to refine, some pro yeah. touches that we want to do at the, you know, the, the pitching aspect of things. So it's been good and looking forward for the next couple I have before the season, man. I'm excited. How much for you in spring training is it a little bit of a of a give and take? Like you, it's a natural progression for your body. You know at this point where you should be, so you're keeping that going while also trying to work on things. I mean, we've heard it a lot this this spring training. It just you know we're getting news about Garrett Cole. His body's not exactly feeling where it should be at this time. My brother, he's a little bit behind schedule and looking like he's going to start the season on the IL. So pitchers know their bodies and it's almost like if they're not where they should be at a certain point in spring training they know it immediately and feel like something might be off so how much of spring training is you just keeping on your progression and hoping your body recovers in the right amount of time no it's a huge aspect of it um the season is very routine oriented and the off season happens you know it happens overnight from one day to the next, the, off the season stops and you need to figure out your new routine. So obviously I take anywhere between two to three weeks for just decompress, rest the mind. But then I then I really look to find that routine that's going to keep me, it's going to keep me going, it's going to help me build a foundation. And the way I do it is I know we usually have to report to camp on February 14th. Yeah. And then I start working it back. I reverse engineer my off season. Like I know I have to show up to spring training with, six bullpens under my belt okay so that would mean the friday before spring training i throw a bullpen here and then i start taking it back taking it back and then i come up with my throwing progression and that that's that progression allows me that if everything goes well i show up to cam you yeah. know if you need me to throw a bullpen on the first day i'll be able to do that and any changes that i need to do it gives me that breathing room for any adjustment that wouldn't be a major setback but you know it gets to the point that you know your body you know exactly when your body's telling you that it's time to take a step back or, you know, it's time to, you know, you're feeling good, you're recovering well, you can turn it up a notch, but it's really identifying, knowing what, what things work for you. You know, yeah. as a starter, we get the luxury to know when we play so we can adjust the route, like the, the four days in between, we can, we can adjust that, you know, you, you want a day to recover, you want a day to, you know, flush things out. Then you're getting back on the work. The way I see it, like you pitch, you empty the tank, you empty the bottle, you get, yeah. then you get four days to, you know, replenish that. And during and spring training is a good time to mess around with seeing what helps you replenish that tank. So, um, yeah, there's many ways to do it. And a lot of times it's in the weight room, it could be in the training room, it could be your diet, it could be your sleep. So spring training, we get so many resources, we get so many coaches and it's really good to, you know, hear the feedback from everyone. So when the season comes, you have a very established routine. Interesting. And I, so we mentioned that since the last time you came on about a, about a year and a half, two years ago, 
a lot has changed since then. You were with the the Marlins at the time, so you went through a trade. Last year, by the way, punched out 234 guys. No big deal. Career high there. Uh, I want to talk to you about the trade because it's I, I don't I don't think often fans of the game quite understand the human element of of baseball or sports in general. Just the fact of getting traded and uprooting everything you've ever known, moving across the country to a place like Minnesota, who I don't want to put words in your mouth, but probably didn't know the most in the world about a place like Minnesota. So <laughs> Talk to me about the process of getting traded, how you found out. I just, I'd love to pick your mind on that whole process for you. Yeah, it's a huge adjustment in many, many aspects. And I remember I, I was going through my regular off season, 2022 into 2023. So it was January and, you know, with social media now, it's hard to escape, you know, rumors or what's been thrown yeah. out there. So, like, I knew, like, because especially because of the 2022 deadline that my name was out there. But, you know, like, I, my, my mentality was I'm still a Marlin. You know, I'm getting ready to right. show up to the Jupiter facility on February 14th to get ready. Uh, and then you're ready for the World Baseball Classic. But yeah, like, you World had that to get ready and all that kind of stuff. But then, like I said, it's hard to escape social media. And I heard that things were intensifying, intensifying. And I was babysitting my nephew one day and I get a phone call. And then just like that phone call was followed probably by like 40 more phone calls of it, it actually happening. And it was just, you know, in baseball, we we get they try to teach us not to get too attached because, you know, from one day to the next day you could be traded and you have to move you know your entire life somewhere else but it's hard not to get attached you know the marlins was at the at, the, at that time all i knew in the major league world yeah. so obviously i developed some you know some um some love for you know the people there the organization so that was just you know it's a it's a little bit of a bittersweet moment but then like one everything once you start realizing what a trade really means you know it means that someone wants you it means that someone yeah. sees something in you and, you know, I showed up to camp and the Minnesota Twins really welcomed me in like in the best possible way. They made me feel part of the family right away. Um, they explain the way they do things and not just the way they do things, why they do things, why they want you to get better. The things they, they the things that they can provide you, like they're going to throw everything at you. And all you have to do is keep an open mind, filter through all the information and then just you have to buy into the philosophy. And I was able to do that. It was such a great fit. And like you said, I didn't really know much about, you know, Minnesota or the Twins. Playing in the NL East, I, had, I didn't really have enough contact with the AL Central. So it was a, mm -hmm. it was a big adjustment. After, after the season was over, I had time to really, really, re really see how much I was dealing with at the time. You know, I made it to Minneapolis and, you know, new places, new city, new teammates, new organizations. So like, you know, there was all that stuff that I was still like adjusting, adjusting. Yeah. But then once I was able to get over that hurdle, over that hump, then it was just fun. It was about enjoying my situation, like be where my feet are and then just go out to the field and have fun. And it ended up being such a, such a fun year in a lot of aspects. Was there anything you said when you first got traded and you're talking to the organization, they immediately make you feel wanted? They tell you why they wanted you, how they're going to help you going forward. Is there anything that stood out to you when you were talking to them? It's like, oh, my God, this is this is great. I would love that. Or, I would, you know, thank you for telling me this. I can work on this. Or did something stick out to you? Well, during the phone call, like those initial phone calls, you know, the first two days, it was all about, we think highly of you, like, yeah. like you've been on a radar for X amount of time. So like, you, you, like they plant that seed in your mind. They plant that idea, like, okay, like they see something, There's yeah. there has to be something. That then spring training comes, I, may, I make it here to Fort Myers and the twins, they, they have these get to know yourself meetings. Like okay. it's a series of meetings where you walk in and they explain you who you are, you know, based on all, all the info they have. And then at the last meeting, they they think, but this is how we think you can get better. This is how, this cool. is what you think could elevate your game. And then like, they started like, you know, I like, I like statistics. I like numbers. I like to know why the why of things. So yeah. like, they just kept throwing all these options, all these opportunities, all these numbers. And the final result of that was adding the new pitch, you know, the slider, sweeper. 
uh, because they threw all the numbers at me. Like right now you're, you know, exploring with three options, like north, south, and uh, your east. Like if you add something going to this club site, yeah. you can open up so many more options. And, you know, like they, you know, they, they back all that information up with more information, like comparable pictures that can work all parts of the strike zone. So, you know, they... They were very good with their information, with their research. And all I had to do, like I said, was buy into it yeah. and then just work really hard with it. And, you know, not only they gave me the idea, the information, they were with me every step of the process. So awesome. very thorough uh, on the way they do things. You immediately bought into it and they immediately bought into you. You signed an extension <laughs> basically right when you got there. What made you want to sign that extension with Minnesota and not maybe a little while after that test free agency? You you got there. It seemed like you realized it's the place you wanted to be and signed your extension. What made you want to do that? No, it, it felt like a it felt right. It felt like a good fit. And obviously the number one thing is being honest with yourself and like, okay, how long do I see myself playing baseball for? You know, some people, they play for 20, some people play for less and, yeah. you know, it, it's different for everybody, but like, you know, at this point in my career, you know, I, you know, I want to keep playing, you know, I want to, yeah. I want to play for as long as I can. And then like all of through spring training last year, you know, I kept just getting good vibes. Everything felt right. It's an organization, you know, where there's like, the core values are very family oriented. You know, everyone's here with the same common goal. Everyone's here to make everyone better. Like everyone's pushing to make you better because, you know, the best version of yourself is going to make the whole team, you know, better and win a lot of games. So, uh, and, you know, it, it was it was a good fit. I, you know, and now with a full year under my belt as a Minnesota twin, I love the city. I love the fans. I love the way we do things. So it's, it's a good place, man. It just, it felt right. And um we you know we and my family when we were surprised it was a good surprise when we found out that, yeah. that they were interested in making that happen and you know once it got done it felt even better what is your favorite part of the city favorite part of the city of minneapolis what is it oh man um well, this is funny. I like, I like, I like downtown. Downtown's downtown's fun. I remember going to Minneapolis the first time, and there's all those sky bridges. And yeah. I asked, like, why there were so many bridges or like those sky things? <laughs> because it's freezing cold, and you have to use them. Uh, but Minneapolis is good. I like the city, and I like that you can drive, you know, 20, 25 minutes in either direction, and you'll find a nice suburb out there. And there's yeah. so many parks, there's so many lakes, and I like doing uh, that kind of outdoor stuff, you know. When we have a night game, I don't have to show up to the field until, you know, noon, a little afternoon. I like yeah. finding a park in the morning, go to the lake, fly my drone. So I like that aspect. Like the city is super nice and then you can drive any direction and you can have that like outdoor feeling. That's awesome. Your first postseason start uh, for the Twins was at home. You pitched the Twins to their first playoff win <laughs> since 2004, which is wild and really cool for you to be able to do. What was that playoff atmosphere like in, in Minnesota? It was insane. It was insane. Everything leading up to that first playoff game last year, like you could feel the anticipation. You could feel that everyone wanted it. You know, you mentioned that it had been 18 postseason games mm -hmm. without, you know, without winning. So as so many people wanted this to happen and they showed up to the field, like everyone that could make it to the stadium, they did. And like, we just felt a tremendous amount of support and energy. I remember just walking my way from the dugout to the bullpen just to start getting ready for the game. The place was already packed, 30, 40,000 people. Yeah. They were cheering. And all I was doing was just walking to the to the mound. And I'm like, <laughs> and these people are here for real. These people are here because they want, they want us to make, you know, give them something to cheer for, something exciting. And, you know, I felt it. I felt that every single pitch that I had, I felt that it had, you know, like that intention. Like I was locked in and, um, you know, that adrenaline was pumping and like I was just throwing every pitch, you know, with the intent, with the mentality, the conviction that, you know, quality pitch after quality pitch. Does that legitimately help you having the crowd be as into it as they are from literally your bullpen session to the last out of the game? Does does that help you in any way on the mound during the game i think it does i think it does uh it helps you but also you need to keep it under control because if yeah. you try to get too big if you try to make the moment even bigger than it already is it can make you 
get away from who you are or like the things that you do well. So I did, I did have to find myself a couple of times, just like bringing everything back to the center, like, yeah. okay, breathe, keep it, keep it within yourself. But you know, like when you get someone in an O2 account and those people start getting loud and they're moving the towel thing, like, you know, like you want to, you want to do it. Yeah. You, you feel that pump and um, it keeps you engaged. It keeps you engaged. It keeps you committed from, from the very first pitch until the very last pitch. And it's just an unbelievable environment. It was honestly, I, I said 234 strikeouts, career high last year, postseason win for you and, and the twins. Awesome year. You were also an all star for the first time, which I think you should have been one at least before. <laughs> but what was your first all star game experience last year up in Seattle? How cool was that? It was so cool. It was cool. Uh, it happened quick. They, I wasn't notified up until the weekend before. Mm -hmm. um, I already ha had made some plans for the all -star, uh, for the Ulcer break. <laughs> you know, like I was more than happy to cancel those plans to <laughs> being selected to be an All Star, and it was just so cool. You know, I it was during WBC. It was cool to be in a locker room with you know guys that All Stars, MVPs, all guys from you know that have accomplished so much. And then like obviously the All Star game. Then you're dealing with you're like hanging out with all-stars guys that have that yeah. have also accomplished so much so that to me that's my favorite thing you know we were shagging batting practice and i was just talking to the best guys in the league you know okay why do you do things what's your what's your mentality so like learning from them as much as i could and you know you get to it's a fun time to play fun baseball like yeah. everyone's just having fun you get to see everyone just you know we're here having a good time and then you get to play a very meaningful game and it's just, I'm, it was just such a cool experience. And I'm very glad that I got to pitch in the game too. There's a lot that goes on that week. What, what was your favorite part? There's the derby, there's the red carpet, there's the game, there's you meeting people. What would you say looking back on that few days for you was your favorite part of All-Star Week? Uh, I like the derby. Seeing it in person for the first time was cool. I grew up watching every All-Star, every home run derby. Yeah. So having the opportunity to be, you know, uh, in front of the dog out on the field watching it happen and seeing the guys hit the baseballs um i enjoy the red carpet you know it was just it was it was very unique i had only seen like the the parade or the carpet on social media yeah. in the past of experience they just walking and you know it makes you feel kind of like a like a hollywood movie thing you're like man <laughs> this is for real this is legit there's people here cheering as we're just walking and there's press everywhere so I did enjoy those. The on-field aspect was like the batting, the home run derby, and then yeah. the one off the field was the whole parade, red carpet event. Who was a favorite? Who was your favorite person that you met? Uh, I really enjoy meeting Michael Lorenzen. I got a ton of information about um, from him on how to take care of your body. You know, he's yeah. very into the body, body awareness, feeling athletic, feeling strong. I enjoy talking to George Kirby from Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guy to throws a ton of strikes, nasty. So I just wanted to like, you know, get a feel for his mentality. Like when you're on the mound, what's your, what do you tell yourself to attack hitters to get after them? So yeah. like I said, you're, you're surrounded by the best of the best. So if there's any opportunity to learn something, you know, why not go ahead and take it? There's a famous story yep. of Roy Hall Halliday learning the cutter from Mariano Rivera in the 2008 All-Star game. So it's a good opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I want to ask you about two young guys on the Twins. First up being Royce Lewis. Talk to me a bit about that guy and just how much fun he is to, to play with. Man, he's so much fun. We were actually locker mates last season. His locker was next to my locker. And I'll tell you that we didn't have enough, a lot of hair gel going on, but we had a lot of good vibes going on. That guy is <laughs> so fun. That that guy is like, he's electric. And then he's just like the nicest guy of the field. You yeah. know, he just, he wants to put a smile on your face before he puts one on his own face. That's you know, awesome. he's always checking on you. And then that same attitude, I think is what allows him to play the game with the fun and that freedom that he plays with, you know, like he knows yeah. he's thankful for the opportunity. He's blessed to be in that situation. And he just goes to the play with that tremendous amount of confidence and, you know, does all the cool things that he, that he, can, that he can do. So, I mean, it's just such a good player, but an even better human being. Yeah. I had him on, he was on the show 
very early on one of the first ever guests of the show and um just became a big fan of his and it's so so good to see him healthy one and and now we're able to see what he's able to do when he is healthy and, and able to play I mean dude last year how crazy was it every time he came up with the bases loaded he was hitting a grand slam I mean it's the it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen this is such a crazy stretch he hit one like last week in spring training he hit one last week, yeah. some form. <laughs> It was unbelievable. Next yeah. up, I got to ask about Edward Julian. He's a guy that during the World Baseball Classic was watching him and was like, I think this guy's going to be a stud. And then last year really showed that he is going to be a stud. How cool is he to play with? Oh, he's so cool to play with. You mentioned the WBC. And, you know, last year, my first weekly camp, I was overwhelmed meeting people, waiting for them to put their jerseys on so I can start learning some last names. Yeah. And after the WBC, I'm like, oh, that's a guy that's in camp. Like, I, yeah. I've seen him before. Like, he's actually pretty good. I was watching all the Canada. I was watching all WBC games, obviously the, Can the Canada games. Uh, and then I started asking about him and learning about who he is. Then he gets called up in Yankee Stadium. And then he starts showing what he can do. And, you know, like, that's one. It's He's one of those players that if you're pitching against a team and you see the lineup and you see his first name, like, leading off, you're like, man, like, you know, like he makes you feel that way. He's the guy that makes you feel like, you know, I have to be on my A game. I have to yeah. challenge him. And, you know, he steps in the box and, you know, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. He's not afraid to take close pitches. Like he's just there to make make a good contact. He knows it only takes one swing, one good swing on the ball to make something happen. And, you know, then he started working a lot on all the other aspects of the game. We He came up knowing that he could hit. But he like he know knowing he could make some adjustments, some other yeah. aspects of the game. So he was always the first guy doing early work to get better. You know, he showed up to the big leagues wanting to get better. What yeah. can I do to help the team? What can I do to provide more value, more wins? So, you know, you see that hunger from a young guy, and you're like, you know, this guy's special. This guy can be really good for us for a long time. So um, you know, as a pitcher, and I get to I don't get to like interact with him much. I mean. Not as much as I do with my yeah, pitcher and all that. But like when I see him on the field, first one there, just taking grumble after grumble after grumble, like we noticed that. And, you know, then he shows up in the game. What was your World Baseball Classic experience like? How how cool was that for you? Oh, it was incredible. It was the coolest experience that I, at, at the time that I could have asked for, you know, I... Uh, I was contacted by the Venezuelan team federation uh, long mm -hmm. before the actual WBC, but like yeah. I didn't know what to expect because I, it was my first one, but like any expectation that I had was like, you know, easily, it was easily like, it was better than I, than I thought yeah. it would be from, you know, from being around guys like Miguel Cabrera, Ronald Acuna, you know, those guys that are, Miguel used to be one of the best, Acuna is one of the best right now. And, you know, like, man, like they're on the same team that I am. How fun is this? You know, <laughs> Salvador Perez caught my game and it was cool. And, you know, I always wonder, like, there has to be, you know, Venezuelan trainers, uh, strength and conditioning coaches, other coaches that I don't know that they're Venezuelan and they're around. So I got to meet so many Venezuelans that are in cool. the MLB world. To me, that was also really cool. And I got to finally talk and interact with guys that during the season I would see during bat during batting practice. And I would just like, you know, say hi from afar, but actually like sitting down and talking to them. You know, we were together for like two weeks. So um, I, I took a lot from the WBC, the atmosphere, the experiences, but also like the kind of relations that I was able to build was really, really cool. Do you think that atmosphere pitching in the world baseball classic helped you kind of have that experience by the time the playoffs came around and learning to, okay, I gotta, I gotta rein in my emotions a little bit right here. I got to channel it in. Did, did having that experience pitching in front of those crowds, which were insane during the world baseball classic help you in the postseason? hundred percent. Uh, before the WBC, I never pitched in an environment like that. So the yeah. WBC it was just like, man, this is, this is fun. I wish we like, I want, I want to do this again. I wish you could, I wish <laughs> we could do it yeah. more. like, hopefully we go all the way so we can make it happen. And so when the first couple, when the first play of game came, you know, like it was just one of those where you tell yourself, like, I've been this before, you know, I know I don't need to change anything. I know I don't have to try to be anyone that I'm not. It's just about being present in every single pitch. So yeah, definitely that um march game wbc last year helped me you know feel more confident feel that i could do that in those situations in october when i had to take the ball to me the world baseball classic it was it 
this was the first one to me that really took off and became a massive, massive thing globally. And I think my takeaway, other than I can't wait for the next one, is this game is is growing internationally at a pace that I don't think anybody could have imagined. I mean, it, we saw the games in South Korea that were unbelievable to see the atmosphere there. And now we're going to get games there. The Padres and Dodgers are about to play there soon. And I just, I guess my question to you would be, what what would you like to see Major League Baseball do to ex- expand the game a bit more internationally? How do you do it? Yeah, no, I think I think they're they're taking the steps in the right direction. You know, they're fully taking advantage of social media, you know, growing the game on that platform, you know, making sure that everyone that is in so, that's in social media has access to see, you know, players for who they are, the things they do on the field. And, you know, like you said, there's going to be the Korea, there's the London, there's the Mexico one again. They So they do all kinds of things. They're doing the DR right now. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm starting to like plan the idea of maybe having a Venezuelan series at some <laughs> point because you know I think it would be cool. It would be another way to get the get the sport closer. Um, South America could use you know a lot of a lot a lot more baseball. Baseball is growing a lot in Colombia, even in Central America. There's so many places that have winter leagues, with yeah. winter league games. So I think just MLB getting closer to more more countries that has as they had that have you know winter ball would be would be tremendous but would be really really cool but like you said our our, sport, our sports growing globally uh in a way that's never done before that's new so like and it, it's exciting you know it's such a beautiful game such a beautiful sport that uh, if me, if some other people had access to it they would see they would see it and, yeah. you know they would want to do it they would want to be a part of our community yeah, I think that was abundantly clear watching the World Baseball Classic. Everywhere the game went, uh, the the crowds followed and and just seeing the energy around those areas. And you mentioned all the places that have winter ball. I mean, those atmospheres are are like a World Baseball Classic playoff major league atmosphere every night. I mean, it'd be yep. so cool to, to to see a game down there. Did you ever play in, in winter ball? No, I I do I, I am part of a team, but uh, it didn't work out when I was in the minor leagues. A couple of times I could have done it. They yeah. put me under the fatigue leagues and all that. So it, yeah. the timing wasn't wasn't right. I want. I would love to. I know it's a little different now, but uh, you know, a Venezuelan series would be fun. And yeah, hopefully the Twins could be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Paulo, I, I always appreciate you coming on, man. One one more thing for you. I, I read you went up to to Driveline this this off season, yep. and what what was your experience like up there? What 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 made you want to go to Driveline? Yeah, it was actually my second time. The first time I okay. went was after twenty twenty two. It was twenty two into twenty three, and you know I really like the workouts. The main thing, and I told them when I went to the second time, like guys, thank you. Like the best thing I took out of it is just. By the time spring training happened, how athletic I felt. You know, I felt that I was moving fast, that I was moving quick. I felt yeah. like an athlete. You know, and that's the best, it's the best way to describe it. You know, like we're on the mound, but like we're we want to move fast to throw fast. And I wanted to go to obviously take a look at how the season went, like compare my numbers to my uh, my previous assessment, and then just to keep it going. I did the whole breakdown. I did the pitching assessment. They broke down my mechanics. And then they give they gave me you know specific drills, plyo exercises to you know build that muscle memory yeah. to maybe you know like maybe see if we could like find areas to work on. But you know the biggest thing about dry line is like before they tell you things you could get better at, they let you know what are the things you are very good at, so you don't forget those because those yeah. are what who you are, the things that got you there. And then like you can find the time to work on your deficiencies, but. You know, I really enjoy their workouts, their throwing progressions, their throwing drills. So, you know, you worked out once. I wanted to do yeah. it again. And, you know, I like I like that they tell you what you're good at. It's like, Pablo, you have a very good change up. Do not <laughs> change it. Here's right? here's what we here's what we want to do going forward. Yeah, before, it was really before, cool. before I give you work, uh, let me tell you what you do. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool going up there because I was up there a year or two ago. It's just outside of, of Seattle. And you know, driveline kind of became a big deal for pitchers, but to see the way they're getting into it with hitters and a lot of big league guys, there were some big league guys up there um, that 
big time big league guys that are hitters that it's just cool to see them like locked in they basically have guys like shirtless all hooked up to things yeah. just and, and down to the most minute movement it's really cool seeing one what they've been able to do with pitchers and two what they're doing now in, in the hitting world and they're really just kind of changing the game of baseball uh, one tiny movement at a time it's really cool yeah and i think one of the coolest things is also people are starting to realize that you don't need to go to driveline to recover your career you know people have a misconception that you would yeah. only go to driveline if your career was you know starting to go down and you wanted to get your stuff get your velo back up i think yeah. people are starting to realize that you know, if there's something, if there's a way that I could get better right now, you know, I want to know, you know, I want to know those things. Like I want to get better. Like, you know, I'm, I'm already here. How do I get here? So it's really cool that people are starting, like players are starting to go to like really, really understand what are some areas they can, you know, do get better at to elevate their game. That's cool. Well, this segment has been brought to you by Driveline. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pablo, I appreciate you coming on, man. Always, always enjoy having you on. Big fan of you as the pitcher, big fan of you as a person. So thanks for coming on, man. Good luck this year and, and go kill it again. And hopefully I see you at the All-Star Game again this year. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Of course, man. Thanks. Bye. All right. Just wanted to thank Pablo Lopez again for joining me. Uh, second time having him on the show. And I, you know, I hope you guys can can see why he's such a good dude. Uh, it's becoming an unbelievable pitcher in the league. Ace of a staff kind of guy for the Twins. So love having him back on, hearing the story about him getting traded and, and being able to pitch in the World Baseball Classic in the playoffs. And I really just love picking his mind about pitching he's so knowledgeable about every little thing that his body is able to do and uh really cool talking to him so hope you all enjoyed this as much as i did um, make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts apple spotify you can watch wherever you want spotify youtube and we're on all social media at flip and bats pod all of them but that does it my friends until next time we are getting so close to the season it's so close i appreciate you for listening and remember find your bat flip it.